Hey everyone, just finished my second day out here at NAB, and I'm just gonna run you guys real quick through what I did today. I'm not gonna take nearly as long as I did yesterday. So, let's get started. Today I took three different classes. There was uh, basically an intro to VR, a lot of really useful information. You know, for someone like me who has not had a chance to really look into VR all that much, it really gave me a lot of insight that I didn't have. It gave me a really good starting point, which is exactly what it was supposed to do, I suppose. But it was just mind-blowing amount of information. Like, I could go on for hours about what I learned in that class today. One of the things he was talking about was how 360 video and VR is cheap for the audience to get into. I mean, you can buy Google Cardboard for, you know, 10 bucks and slap your phone into it, and boom, you've got a VR viewer. Of course, the downside to that is you don't want to make content for that that's any longer than 10 minutes because you can't assume your audience is the headset. You know, things like that. You know, it was a lot of really interesting stuff. Um, you know, and of course, we're, you know, a lot of everything, especially what I'd be getting into for at the beginning of this, you know, would be more 360 video than VR. You know, I mean, your ideal VR experience, you get up, you move around in the room, etc., etc., etc. You know, you can build your room out and you know, Unreal Engine and all kinds of stuff, which is also cheap. You know, like this is all very low barriers to entry, surprisingly, until you get into, you know, insane rigs. Like I saw a picture of a rig today that was like 10 red dragons with eight millimeter lenses and it was all synced together and everything. It looked like it weighed about a thousand pounds. It was ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was really neat, and you know, the uh, the thing that I, I found surprising is he's expect uh, the uh, the speaker said he was expecting this right what right now takes an insane amount of coding as far as setting sounds to come from the right place and being able to move around in that VR space more reliably. He's expecting software kits that don't require a pile of coding to be on the market within the next two years. Just crazy think about I mean you know anyone could do something like this you know so it really opens up the doors to you know like over the next couple of years and it's, you know who knows what's going to be released tomorrow at NAB but over the next couple of years especially we're going to see a lot of super democratization of this uh, VR uh, landscape you know so we'll be able to get in and be shooting videos in 360 you know telling 360 stories and the the language of that video editing and storytelling is still being worked out you know there's some people that are you know like always think you should always bring the audience back to this place but the thing that i picked up today that was really interesting was if the last place you're expecting your audience member to have looked is over here when you make an edit the point of interest better still be over here because you don't want them to be doing this interesting stuff anyway moving on um then the other class the second class i took today was just another major information dump all about VR hardware, you know, it's talking about different rigs and different ways you can do them and be addressing people's concerns with using different rigs, like, it, there's not as much that I can easily digest and spit back out to you guys now, because <laughs> it was just, like, information overload. It was insane. It was awesome. Absolutely insane. And then, uh, yeah, and then the other one I did, the other class I took was about uh, producing a weekly web series, which was insightful, you know, and a, a, a lot of information that I already had a, a base knowledge on, answered some questions I did have, and really I think the big takeaway from that class was it helped me, uh, it, it helped me get the knowledge that I needed to properly decode all the analytics that YouTube's feeding. Like, if you, if you don't have a YouTube channel, if you've never looked under the hood, so to speak, of YouTube, YouTube gives you a just insane amount of analytics and if you have no idea what you're looking at it's all gobbledygook it's insane if you know what to look for you can fine-tune your content to a specific audience if you want or at least know where things are working and not working so today i think was a lot of really good information i decided not to go to the keynote because the uh um description looked like it was going to be focusing on a lot of apple stuff final cut pro etc etc so not not anything that i probably like not anything that I won't feel like I needed to be there for when I see it written up tomorrow by one of the press agencies, you know, and I'm sure everyone will have their own variation of what they said tomorrow, and that's probably good enough. So that was, that was my day on the way back from NAB. 
I shot a uh, hyperlapse out the window of the monorail uh, from the convention center all the way back to the MGM Grand Station where I get off. And, you know, basically compressed, because, I mean, what else am I going to do for 10 minutes? And basically compressed that 10-minute trip to 52 seconds, I think it was. Um, that's going to be up on my Instagram. You'll probably see it on, uh, you know, those of you who are following me on Facebook, you'll probably see it there, too, before the uh, before I get this up online. Um, but if you haven't yet, I'll give you the link. Check it out. Um, it was fun. Speaking of the monorail, and I don't know why I'm in a mood to just rag on Las Vegas uh, architectural decisions <laughs> for, for things that are facing the public and all that. When you look at, and I took this great picture today from the convention center, you can see the strip and the, the monorail station where it looks off, and this monorail station looks awesome. It looks like it's got all this glass work and things, and you expect the inside of it to be open and inviting and look at all the cool things, but you'd be wrong. It's dark and it's all white walls, and the only time you can see out of the damn thing is when you're standing on the platform looking for the train to come down from Stratosphere. I don't know. Again, not a big deal. Doesn't make me, doesn't make me like not want to ride the monorail. It's probably the cheapest way to get anywhere on the strip if you're staying in Vegas for any amount of time. And I know I'm just nitpicking, but it gives me something fun to talk about. So yeah, you know, <laughs> again, this city that overthinks everything. I mean, yeah, the casino floors. You know, your, your casino floors are built like mazes. There's no windows. There's no clocks. That's for a reason. Why? What is the reason for not putting windows in the convention center station? I don't know. Maybe it gets too hot in the summer. Anyway, that's it for me today. I'm Like I said, I'm going to keep it short. If you want to watch yesterday's vlog, I'm going to tag a link at the end. You can also click the uh, card that'll pop up above my head. And you can watch that. Otherwise, I will uh, catch all you guys tomorrow with probably loads more information because I'm gonna take a lighting for VR class and then of course I'm gonna check out stuff on the show floor because the sh convention floor will actually finally be open it'll be awesome so you know whether or not I can actually regurgitate that information in a concise way we'll find out <laughs> but that's it for me now so I'll see you guys tomorrow